Hey everyone, hope your day is going well. So welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to tell you about a paranormal experience that my best friend Teresa and I had on a trip we took to New Orleans back in 2017. She and I have been planning several years to visit the city for its culture and yes, for the haunted history because she and I are attracted to it and I also incorporate the history that goes along with it. We both do. It intrigues us. So, anyway, we planned the trip to explore the city, mostly the historic French Quarter, and we planned to take tour guides into the famous St. Louis Cemetery, which we did. But there is also another location she and I had been very interested in for a long time after watching an episode on Handsome Devils called Hurricane Love. That's on the ID channel. Um, it's about the Rampart Street murder house involving Zach Bowens and Addie Hall, which occurred in 2006, several months after Hurricane Katrina. To give you the backstory on Zach and Addie, would first begin with Zach. Neither were born in Louisiana. They both transplanted to New Orleans. On a trip with his father, Zach decided to stay once his father left, and he found work as a bartender. Addie also worked at a bar across the street from Zach, and that is how they met, became friends, and eventually a couple. Before he met Addie, Zach was married with children, and he was also in the army and served in Iraq. His wife claimed he was never the same person when he came back home, and they would later separate. So enter Hurricane Katrina in late summer of 2005. We know about the devastation brought on by that storm, and the dams breaking killed a lot of people and a lot lost their homes. Fortunately, most of the French Quarter was spared, and that is where the apartment the couple rented and was located. The aftermath for them was, in their eyes, a whole lot of fun. It was like a camping uh, experience in the French Quarter, and the French Quarter was their ghost town campground, so to speak. They even made the headlines of a local paper, enjoying their 15 minutes of fame. But once everything began to turn normal, businesses opening back up, electricity restoring, they realized it was time to go back to work. By now, stress had started to sit in heavy with those two. Many factors played a role in what was to happen. Drug issues, arguing and fighting all the time, Zach's unstable mind from being in Iraq, Addie's expectations of being a free spirit fading away because she began to see the poisons of their relationship. The last fight they would ever have is that Zach snapped and strangled Addie to death. Zach spent two weeks in a fog about what he did. His behavior was odd. He could be seen out drinking every night, but in the day he was held up in his apartment doing the unthinkable. What he did in that apartment above a voodoo shop makes one ask, can this actually have happened? Is this even true? Yep, it happened, and it's very true. He dismembered Addie's body and put the parts in the freezer, fridge, oven, and her head was in a stove boiling in water. Two weeks later, Zach jumped off the roof at the Omni Hotel in the French Quarter. Inside his shirt pocket was a suicide note that, st that started out, I had to take my life for the life I took. He also put the address so police wouldn't know where to go. What they found is what nightmares are made of. They found Addie's dismembered body in various spots in the kitchen, as I mentioned before. They also found spray painted messages by Zach on the walls. Zach clearly had a psychotic break. Since, I have learned from watching other documentaries that the landlord actually rented that place out after the murder with the same appliances. He didn't even get new ones. Creepy. Hot and tired from our tour in the cemetery in June in New Orleans, all we were there to do was take photos and some video, which Teresa did perform a short session with her phone. We had no idea we would catch an EVP, but we did. See Bloody Mary? Hello, is there anybody here? Addie or Zach? We're at the Zach and Addie house. Addie or Zach? We're at the Zach and Addie house.
Royal Hotel rooftop bar. And then he, um, one night, this was the one night they said he didn't pay his tab. He walked up to the observatory roof and sat on the rail, the ledge, and he went backwards. Everybody thought he fell, so he was drunk and fell. So they called the cops, they got his body, and the cops found a note in his pocket, in a Ziploc bag, in case his blood splattered it. The note said, this is not accidental. I had to take my own life to pay for the one I took. If you send a patrol call to 826 North Rainforest, you will find a dismembered corpse of my girlfriend, Addie, in the oven, on the stove, and in the fridge. A signed confession for myself is there. So the cops got the landlord out of his bed and made him come open that door. So when they came in, they found his note. And this is what his suicide note said. I scared myself not by the action of strangling the woman I had loved for nearly one and a half years and then desecrating her body with my entire lack of remorse. I've known forever how horrible of a person I am, ask anyone. So I decided to quit my job to spend the 1500 cash I have being happy until I die and that's what, till I kill myself. So that's what I did. Good food, good drugs, good strippers, good friends, any loose ends I have had. I didn't contact any of my family that explained the shop and had a fantastic time living out my days. It's just about that time now. Today is Monday, 16 October, 2 a.m. I killed at 1 a.m. Thursday, October 5. I very calmly strangled him. What was, it was very quick, but what happened after that was not. He claimed that after he strangled her and killed her, he sexually violated her body several times before he passed out in a drunken stupor on the futon, which was by the AC in those three chairs. Then he went to work the next day. He delivered his groceries and he came back home. He drug her body to the bathtub and used a hot saw and pocket knife to dismember her corpse. When the cops walked into the kitchen, there was a note on the oven door that said, don't look. Her arms and legs had been roasted in there beyond recognition. There were two pots on the stove containing onions, bell peppers, and zataran seafood seasoning. One, pocket had her hand, one pot had her hands and feet, the other one had her head. The torso was wrapped up in plastic wrap in the fridge. That is the same stove and fridge from that murder. And this apartment's been rented several times. So they, he rented that with that oven and wow. that fridge. Now, she had been cooking for 11 days. They said he cleaned up the bathroom really well, but there was no evidence that he ate her. There was no human remains in his system. There was no evidence that they could find on her body because it was a mess that, that indicated that he ate her, but they still called him the French Court Cannibal. So they're both up there. There's also um, in this room right here, in that little room right there, yeah. One girl asked me before I even told the story, she goes, I got the name Abe. Well, Abe's a little eight-year-old slave boy that died of the fevers back in his day. He hides in that closet. Oh. Oh, he, oh. he is scared. I, I get filled or something. He got scared I mean, seeing like... Zach kill Addie that way, oh, so that's why he retreated to that closet. Now, Margaret Sanchez was a good friend of Addie's. They worked together at the bar. After the murder and it hit the news, Margaret paced up and down on that sidewalk every day, wondering, obsessed with how Zach did this to Addie. Also, we heard around town after that that she was actually in love with Zach. But she paced up and down, up and down, up and down, obsessed with this murder. Well, on the 10th anniversary of Katrina, Abe retreated to the closet again because this place was very active on the 10th anniversary. But also, there was... um a head and arms and legs washed up on the Gulf Shore. They pieced it together and found out that it was a woman named Karen Lockhart. Karen Lockhart was a stripper on Bourbon Street and they backtracked her last days at the strip club she worked at. Coming out of the strip club, either side of her, when she left her shift, Margaret Sanchez and her husband. So they grabbed him, went to trial. The husband pled not guilty. He's doing life. Margaret pled guilty and claimed that he made her do it and all this. So she's doing eight to ten years. So, yeah. It was her. She was obsessed with that. She knew Zach. She knew Addie. Her husband had never even met the two of them. They tried to blame it on voodoo because this used to be Priestess Miriam's temple until the fire. Um, 
and said it was because we didn't feed our altars. We can feed our altars anywhere. It had nothing to do with that. So there's also a little girl named Annabelle. The workers that were fixing it after the fire saw her walking outside with her doll in her hand in the courtyard. There, where the stable was, people have gotten hook prints on their EVP. Um, there's a ghost horse back there named Brutus. They call him, they call him Butch sometimes. They also have a woman named Rose that's like in her 60s, very, very Catholic. There's a guy, maybe in his 30s, that is in there in the hallway he likes to stay. His name is Dave. Um, so, but they can come and go. So sometimes, some, there's also a creature in the back. And he happens to like me, but he loves misery, chaos, and causing trouble. <laughs> he actually drove the old lady in the back to almost commit suicide. She called the cops. They took her away. We haven't seen her yet. Before that, he made her sick, and she had to be taken away to the hospital, and she was there for three or four weeks. We were doing a seance in that room, and we were all sitting like that. And the lady with the black hat, y'all saw me talk to about this. Mm -hmm. She was there. She's a medium, too. Okay. Um, and there's another one, and Mary, and some people who paid to be there. So we were doing the seance, and I think it was Andy, the one with the black coat you saw. She was behind the black curtain in there because she was by herself. So we sitting there, and all of a sudden, my knees down went ice cold. So I had to open up my head to see what was making that happen. I saw a creature sitting on my feet, leaning against me. Oh, wow, that's And good. he's looking up at me like... Okay, I think that's what got me earlier. <laughs> and he's got a really weird kind of big head, little tiny beady black eyes, sharp, razor pointy silver teeth. Mm -hmm. And he's got a skinny you. tubular body, arms and legs that are long and bony. And his, he was that. there, he was I sitting there, and he you. wasn't doing anything. No, was I couldn't share was behind I told you He wasn't being aggressive, was he was just sitting there looking at me grinning. So I said, okay, as long as you're behaving yourself, you can stay. He stayed the whole seance on my <laughs> legs. So when we finished, Sharon, who reads here on the weekends, she looked at me, she goes, what was that sitting on you? I said, I don't know. It looked like a goblinish creature, I guess. Good word for it. I said, I don't know what that was, but she goes, well, he wasn't being mean to you. He seemed to like you. I said, yeah, he was being good. You know, he's just kind of grinning at me. She goes, yeah, I saw him. So it never occurred to me because I was like, you know, what, are you, what is it? You know, I forgot to ask his name. So a few weeks, the next seance I got to do, we're sitting there again, and I saw him in the back. He likes to hang out by the ladies' house that he made go crazy. And I saw him, I was like, oh, you here. And it was a lot, that day, a lot of chaos. And he was thrilled to death because everything went wrong that day. And he was in his glory. At the stands, I said, okay, little man, what is your name? He said, my name is Tibron. I was like, okay. Well, you're a creature from another dimension. That kind of sounds like a other dimension name. So I was like, okay, Tibron is your name. Well, when I said that out loud, because I said, oh, the creature told me his name's Tibron. Some of the people that were on the tour for that seance said, that means teeth. Mm. I said, what? And Mary's like, what? And she goes, yeah, that word means teeth. He's got long silver teeth. He's got big mouth full of teeth. So it makes sense that that's his name. <laughs>
May I enter your space? This is a uh Can you light this up? Can you make it go to red, please? Are you a child? Is Zach or Addie present? talk on this device I'm holding. Is there anything you want me to know? Is there anything I can do to help you? Thank you. Thank you for speaking with me. Sorry, I'll go back. <laughs> oh, is that the bathroom? Yes. Are y'all getting anything? I don't know. How is this on? Where did you get this from? I just downloaded it now. Oh, is it like a um, spirit communication? Huh? No. I'm just recording. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Do y'all know the story about this house? No. The Zach and Addie house? No, tell us about it. When you go home or wherever you are to your room, whatever, Google the Zach and Addie murder house on 826 Rampart Street. Okay. That's where we are right now. This is their house. This is where he murdered his girlfriend. He chopped her to pieces. This is the very stove he put her body pieces on. Shut up. She, I'm not, Google it. She was in this freezer and fridge. He painted all over these walls what he did. And then he went and killed himself on the Omni. Jumped off the Omni Hotel and there was a letter in his pocket telling what all he had done. And that the police could find his dead girlfriend here. And what he had done to her and why. Google it. And why? Why was it? Uh, because he had cheated on her and they had been already had a struggling relationship. They were on coke and alcohol and it was right after the Hurricane Katrina. So it was 05, I believe. Just Google it. It's very interesting. 05, 2005. Well, yeah, that's recent. Recent enough. As probably as rust. How much it was? Because it has been repainted. Actually, after all this happened and the house has been laid out several times since, but then it Burnt down. So this has been oh, wow. fixed. But I mean, it's all still original. They had to do, redo some of the structure. Like, that's definitely original. And see they did not know the story. Just Google it. It's worth the read. I'm surprised the tour guide didn't say anything about it. She did last time, but I think there's something going on with it because it's disrespectful because they were residents here. They lived here. You know what I mean? Lived and worked here. Um, Addie, the girl that was murdered, she worked at the Spotted Cat, that club, the jazz club. It's not too far from here. Have, you seen that? have people seen ghosts here? You have? I'm not the only one. What did you see? Right now she's trying to get the keys, but she actually caught something that didn't look human here. That from the last time we were here. Where? She did? In the room she's in right now, the bathroom. That's why I was like, are y'all getting anything? Oh, I didn't know. Like, what if 
How did she get it? She didn't even know she had it. Once we got back to our room, we were just like kind of going through our stuff. Recording. Yeah, I'm doing the video. Somebody dropped their key. Oh, Zach. Yeah. Um, a couple got up for this man. Remember the name? Frank. Zach. Zach. Addy. Addy. Zach. Addy. Zach. Martin. And it's this address we're at right now. A twenty six Rampart. Chopped her up. Google it. You can read the whole story. It's so interesting. Is that yours? Yeah, going that's, just a bit of that's this. Oh, it's, it's me. You. Okay, y'all can come on downstairs. I'm trying to stand here by myself. Can you show yourself? Dave, are you here with us? Can you help us get spirit communication? She got a hit from that thing with the state. Did she really? or anything, which is weird. I know. I, can't, I don't know how anybody can live in these little tiny houses. I like that door, don't you? That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That's all there is to this, so it's one bedroom. Turn it off. Mm -hmm. Where did that thing say? Look, you're in still. Oh, I can use my audios too. Again. Does that say lies? Oh, this. Yes. Are you serious? Uh, I thought you fell. I hope it's something trying to knock that out of my hand. Can you tell me if you were the one that affected me earlier today? If you're here, can you say hello? It just said something. Oh God, come here. It said arms loss. Arms loss. Loss, arms, loss. What does that mean? Um, what is that? I'm just saying it said arms and then it said loss. Oh, uh, well, mine says false. Oh, it was that that was mm -hmm. lighting up. It says paper, too. 
Did I, did I just see you? If that was you, can you show yourself again? Can you come up nice and slow in front of the camera? I just got something. Did you really? Something, yeah. It's, uh, if, if that's you, can you? Sit beside Teresa? Yeah. Can you show yourself as a ball of light? A really um, bright ball of light? What did it say? Cars. It said daycare. It said Jess. Dave's here. Look. It just wide, open wide. Reset. Reset. Dave, are you sitting in the chairs? My whole body is like trembling. Well, hello, Dave. I feel a cold spot right here. A little bit. All right, guys, y'all want to come on down? Be careful coming down like that. Oh, I didn't even notice this. What is it? Like, there's no doll. Did you not see the check-in? Yeah, I saw that stuff. I'm just talking about it right here. Do I shut this door?